All right, let's allow, let's admit everyone. There we go. Let's actually take this one off. Great. Welcome, welcome everyone. I can see we've still got a minute to go. Lovely to see you all here. Marion, oh my goodness, it has been years. <laughs> How are you doing? Awesome, awesome. Brilliant. So good to see you. You look like you've got a lovely spot there. I see a yoga trapeze and I can see you're still in your house. So that means you must be down in um, Komiki, was it before Komiki area? Hey, lovely, great. Okay, let me pop that onto speaker view. I hope you can all hear me and see me clearly enough. I think we'll just give everyone another minute or so to get here. It's quite exciting. Um, we had nearly 50 people register for the workshop, which is really cool. So I know lots of people are wanting to just get the, the recording again. Um, but it's great that there's so many of you interested in spring. Hi, Andy. How's it going? She's also here. Good. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Love that picture behind you. Ingrid. I think my mom's here, which means Suzette will be here. Awesome. And my brother's there. Wow. <laughs> Everyone is around. So cool. All right, so I think most of you know me, but for those who don't and for those who might be watching the recording, my name is Nina. I am a yoga teacher. I've got a studio in Cape Town with some awesome teachers still teaching there while I live in Mozambique. I am a yoga teacher trainer for the Academy of Yoga and Ayurveda. And at the moment, I am a farm girl living on a farm in Mozambique, loving the lifestyle and also training as a yoga health coach and that's what's given me the opportunity to do these free talks and to be here with you guys just to kind of share what i'm learning and um, share my journey with you so that is pretty much what where i am <laughs> who i am and where we're we going so today's talk is all about spring I thought while we wait for everyone in the chat, you can see that at the bottom, there's a little thing that says chat. And in there, maybe you can just say, hi, where are you calling in from? Because I know we're not all from Cape Town. Um, and maybe how are you feeling today? So if you have got a new accessible near a screen, screen or laptop, I know it's not that easy on a phone, but if you, if you are around, then you can always just share how you're doing, where you're at, and we'll try and make this nice and interactive. Usually we don't have too many people live, um, but that does allow us to, to connect with each other a little more intimately, which is actually quite nice. And the way I like to, to do these little workshops. Um, so we will do that. So pretty much today what we'll explore is spring, We'll explore the concepts around spring, kind of what it means to, to us, what it means physically, energetically, mentally, maybe emotionally, and kind of just really, really getting into the, the season of, of this new kind of vital energy. All right. I see some people have disappeared, Shema Hope. I also don't have internet issues and I hope you don't. So what I will do, I'm just going to make and Andrea, Andy, co-host in case I do disappear because I know that if something does happen, she'll be able to step in for no. me <laughs> without any problems. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, but I, my internet has been stable today. So we should be in, we should be in luck. Cool. All right. So with these three talks, I get to do one a month today or this month is all about spring. Next month, I'm going to do a little bit more of a journaling practice where we can dive a little deeper into um, kind of 
what we're looking for in the direction we want to go. It's always really great to, to have direction. So I see Andy's calling in from Pretoria, which is great. I know Marion and my mom are going to be in Cape Town. And we'll see where everyone else um, is coming from. Um, so that is that. I thought let's start with a nice centering practice because it's always lovely to begin to just ground. If nothing else, I know I need it. <laughs> And just being in front of a camera is not my natural state. So for if it's no one else's to no one else's benefit, it will be to, to mine. All right. So I'll do this standing. You are welcome to sit in whichever comfortable position you find yourself or you would like. You can close your eyes. And you're just going to breathe. You're going to feel the air flowing in. And then notice the breath, the air flowing out. So come a few comfortable, slow, steady breaths. Noticing how with the inhalation there's a sense of expansion. And how are the exhalation layers are drawing inwards to your center line? You continue to breathe, inhaling, noticing that lovely expansion, and exhaling, bringing all the energy back to your center line. And as you do that, and as you breathe with time, Allow your attention to settle at your third eye center. Move the attention at this third eye center. Just take a moment to notice what images, what feelings, what sensations come up when I mention the word spring. And you might get pictures of kind of like birds and bees buzzing around, maybe a little shoot extending up out through the earth, all the beautiful tree branches, spring flowers. Maybe it's feeling of kind of discomfort or frustration or itchiness. And maybe you're oscillating between the two even. And just acknowledging and being with whatever feelings, sensations, or emotions come up. And then imagining a beautiful garden. I'm just going to imagine yourself walking through that garden, taking in the sights, the sounds, the feeling. As you walk through that garden, you come across a little clearing. And you notice that there is a fresh pile of earth, rich, nourishing soil. It's kind of deep brown. It's even got that red texture to it or color to it. And on the right of that large pile expansion of earth, you notice a heap of seeds. And these seeds are all different shapes, all different colors. There's some large ones, some small ones, some oval ones, round ones, triangular ones, different colors, different shapes, different textures. And there's one particular seed that calls to you and you pick it up. And you notice the texture, texture of the seed in your hand. It also has a very specific feeling. It's got an intention for you. And as you hold that seed in the palm of your hand, notice what intention comes up. 
And it might not be what you think. It might be inspiration. The word might be beauty. It might be joy. It might be peace. It might be energy or vitality. Just sitting with a seed in your hand for a moment and noticing what sensation, what feeling arises. And that feeling is the intention for you this evening. You're going to take that seed and you're going to make a little hole in the earth and you're going to plant the seed in there. You're going to cover the soil gently with your hands and you're going to notice the texture of the soil in your hand. As you've got your seed safely in that mound of soil, you notice a watering can to the left of you. Pick up the can, very gently start to water lightly the earth. And as you place the can back down, you already observe and notice how the seed begins to germinate, how it begins to send a little shoot through the cracks in the earth. And as you breathe, you notice the shoot growing taller and taller. Each breath you take, the shoot germinating, growing, expanding into a beautiful tree. And as that tree grows and expands with your intention, whatever it is today, I'm going to imagine yourself sitting in front of the tree, resting against the tree and allowing that intention to hold you and to support you. So imagine yourself sitting there with that tree of your intention behind you. Feeling settled, feeling safe, and feeling secure. You take three more breaths in that space, feeling a lovely sense of gratitude. And then after those three breaths, you slowly bring yourself back into this present space and time you're in right now. You need to very slowly begin to rub the palms of your hands together, getting the hands nice and warm. Cup them over your eyes to take a deep breath. They'll take a deep breath in. Sigh the air out. Okay. And then to slowly begin to Blink your eyes a few times. Don't look straight at the screen, just look down towards the ground as you move your hands away. Allow yourself to, to readjust to the lights. And then when you're ready again, you can lift your gaze. Lovely, excellent. Well done, everyone. Um, so you can also, for those who are still around, you can write in the chat how that made you feel. And while we do that, I'm actually going to ask Andy to just unmute herself for a moment. Andy is my awesome friend. She's um, a, well, a wellness woman mentor, and she does a lot of like work with cyclical um, rhythms and cycles, and her work is really, really amazing. And I love her take on spring. So before I get into spring, I thought I'm going to let the very eloquent Andy just um, maybe give her <laughs> two words. Can I do that, Andy? Do you mind? Sure, sure. I'm going to take my glasses off so no, everyone's not staring at my screen. <laughs> the glare of my... Um, spring. Okay, yeah. So I, I, I'm a sort of cyclical living coach. Um, it sounds more complicated than it is. It's just actually by living by our natural rhythms and cycles. Um, and the biggest one that we notice is the outer seasons. So when we think about spring, um, 
you know, and it's different for everybody because everyone has a different relationship with the seasons. So for me, it's about new beginnings. Um, Nina, you were describing in that, uh, that nice grounding center in place of, you know, just nurturing and growing, you know, planting those seeds. And for me, that's kind of like the really early part of spring, almost, you know, before, you know, the, the ground has germinated and spring starts to sprout all these little, little shoots and leaves. Um, but they, of course, they don't all make it, right? And it's, um, and it's about us nurturing those parts. So the spring is like the, the place of ideas and uh, the, you know, if we think in terms of the creative process, it's all the little ideas that we come up with, but we can't follow all of those ideas. So we nurture a couple of them. It's the same with the, you know, when we're in the garden planting, you know, you can't, you know, you try and nurture everything. And then, you know, after a while, you have to kind of start to thin things out because otherwise nothing grows. Nothing can know? grow, nothing can expand. Yeah, can, nothing can be exactly. And you get so preoccupied, right? But I want all the baby carrots to grow, but then they won't have enough space. So it's the same with the creative things. And it, it's, it's kind of the ideas that come up with you and the parts of you that need nurturing. So, you know, we can't be all of the things all of the time. So in terms of our own personal uh, growth and um, self-awareness, you know, we just we bring the awareness to the areas that need the nurturing and we start to focus on those. And spring for me has that, yeah, it has that new beginnings and that nurturing place, but it's also playful. It's innocence and um, childlike. And it also has like a sacred, a sacred uh, place about cherishing, you know, and it's like that, that really nice, you know, you know, if you had a little baby, baby chick or something, you know, um, you've got to be really careful and cherish it. And that's what we have to do with us, uh, our physical selves as well. And yeah, and when we connect to the outer season, that's kind of what happens. You know, we kind of come out of this winter hibernation, but, it, you know, we have to be careful not to rush too quickly. Otherwise we kind of, you know, not too time summer to comes. Through it, eh? and just kind of really take time yeah. to nurture through this little this growing phase because if that shoot isn't nurtured it can just also yeah. kind of be yeah. stomped out or die out mm. so it really needs yeah. a lot of tenderness and care yeah and not overwatering and not too much sun and not you know so sometimes we can over you know it's a fine balance you know and and but that's um it's like with the sea, you know, the, the physical seasons or whether inner seasons, whether it's the day and night, our breath, you know, we don't get it right all the time, you know, but it always comes, the seasons come back around. So, you know, if you're in the garden and you think, well, you know, I didn't really do well with the carrots last year. You know, I'm, I'm actually growing carrots. So that's why I keep thinking of carrots. So <laughs> they didn't work in that area last year. So let's try this area this year and then let's, you know, um, do it, do things a different way. And I think that's what's nice about the seasons is you get to a fresh start. And exactly. spring is definitely that fresh start. Exactly, yeah. And that's the, the beauty as well. It's kind of like you see what's working and what isn't working. And you can always adapt and adjust, you know, from, from year to year, from season to season. Um, there's, you know, like with the, the carrots, it's not like you can plant them in the middle of summer or in the middle of winter. They've got a time when they, they can be planted to, to grow. Um, and the same with us, you know. But it's really important that we don't weed too early. You know, there is, there's a time just to be playful and let these parts of us, you know, like if it's a creative thing, we, um, we, some days we're like buzzing with ideas, you know, and we're like, oh, I'm going to go with that one. No, I'm going to go with this one. And, you know, I need to write it all down. And it's, that's okay to sort of have that playful time and um, play with lots of little ideas. And we don't have to, you know, we don't have to pick one particular one yet, you know? Just yet, yeah, we don't have to be there yeah. yet. We can allow everything no. to come up to the surface at the moment. Yeah, that's the next seed. That's the next part of the season. You don't have to. But for now, you're just kind of allowing those seeds to be planted and watching what grows, what doesn't grow. And, you know, uh, and bringing that innocence and playfulness. You know? It's okay. nice that way. Lovely. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Annie. I'm going to bring you in a little later as well. Um, so that was 
great. What I am, what I love about the seasons is that they're all so so different, um, and they all have their special qualities. And you could hear that from what like Andy was talking about. What I love working with even more are the elements. I absolutely love the elements. And as yoga teachers, we use them, most of us, either our teachers or practicing or um, uh, or do yoga or participate in it. So what I thought we would do with looking at spring is just take it right back. Let's go into the elements and then let's kind of troubleshoot spring from, from there. So the first element that comes up, I'm not sure if you can see my board clearly in this light, but it's the, the earth element. So I've got a nice big firm rock from, from my garden. And the earth element is, you know, it's weighted, it's heavy. There's also a coolness to it. It's really, really stable. It's... Um, if you think of it, it's, it's matter, so it's gross. There's a substance to it. It's not very subtle. <laughs> Actually, it's not subtle at all. Um, and we all have a certain percentage of earth element within us. And there's also a certain amount of kind of like these qualities of school, school stable, heavy, dr it's dry and rough. Um, and there are certain seasons that, you know, have those qualities in them as well. So that is pretty much the earth element. The next one I've got on my board is the water. And we all, especially for those of us who spend a lot of time in Cape Town, know very well about water. So water is, again, it's cool, it's soft, it's moist. So if I have a drink. And if you've got your tea there, you can grab some as well. And you can feel that it's really, really soothing and smooth on the throat. And it also has a bit of this like adhesive nature, like things can kind of stick to it. So that's, you know, the water element you can also notice and pick up in our day and the seasons and in, in the way we are and how much water we have within us. Then the, I'll bring my lovely little let's see if he survives the fire element a perfect um example is a candle um it is what it is sharp it is very very bright and it's spreading you can kind of you know if i bring the the light up a little you can see how the light radiates around and from the candle, you can see it really is upward moving. I should put it back here because I had it up there earlier. We couldn't really see the board. Um, so with a fire, it is very, very penetrating and directional. Then with the air element, I don't really have anything to demonstrate the air element. But if you grab a piece of paper and you just move it, you can feel the air. So again, when you do that, there's a sense of coolness. The more you, you do, you plan yourself, there's a sense of dryness that appears. Air is very, very mobile, and it is very irregular and erratic. It kind of can spread everywhere. And it is subtle, it is light. It is not like our own element that is, that is really, really heavy. There's a sense of, 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 of lightness to the air. And then when we come to ether, you know, at all the, the so the last element ether space um it doesn't have any of these qualities so there's no movement so it's very very still there's no heat so it's cold there's um no water so it's dry there's no earth in it there's no denseness in it so it's really really light and it's all it's just expansive the space, you know, space is everywhere, it's all pervading. So as you know, those are the, the five elements. And that was just a really, really kind of quick run through them. Because, um, and as, as yoga teachers and guys are practicing, you probably know that when we talk about our constitutions, our doshas, you've come across that before with earth and water, when they combine, they form what is known as the Kapha Dosha. And that is kind of like a person or a season that is 
there's like a stability and a denseness to them there's a sturdiness there's also like a lovely squidginess it's like that natural like uh, nurturing mother-like person um so and it's a beautiful beautiful quality to have when we combine the water with the fire we get the peter dosha the peter energy and that is kind of more like a hot sharp um directional forceful not quite forceful energy but a very very high energy um type of space person and there is it can be sometimes confusing to think of like the water with the fire but it's it's kind of like a moistness around the fire that contains it that contains kind of the the heat um if we didn't have that moistness around it the heat would just kind of expand so it's got like a container of moist moisture around it all right and then for most of us are very very familiar with the air and the ether it is those of us who are very creative we're very mobile we very irregular so you can see from my handwriting here that i definitely fall into this category because nothing with my handwriting is structured or stable or <laughs> even it is very very immobile very very irregular all right so uh those are pretty much the the three how we get to the three doshas and the elements and we have all of them within us we just tend to have qualities of one more more than the other all right so what i thought we would look at is how the seasons relate to this and I thought we'd start off with winter because that's where most of us are coming out from at the moment um, and we'll work towards summer because that is the direction we're heading in and we'll go with Cape Town, Mozambique and uh, and here in Pretoria so let's see how different all of these things are so who is in Cape Town? Marion, can you, <laughs> do you want to unmute yourself? Do you want to chat a little? <laughs> She's like, I'm not sure. <laughs> there we go. Marion's also um, a yoga teacher in Cape Town. Are you still teaching in Cape Town, Marion? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, cool. So winter in Cape Town, generally, what are kind of the qualities would you say of winter in Cape Town? So more days than not, um, and more years than not. What, what would you say are the general qualities of winter? Well, it can be very wet, but uh, we also have had some summery days. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, at least sunny days, they're not necessarily warm uh yeah sometimes the rain comes down really hard mm -hmm. and it hasn't been for quite as long i mean usually we have bigger storms at least twice a winter i think we've only had that once and one day a bit of hail uh but yeah they're always uh clearer days uh and at the moment it's a mix of cloudy days and some breaks in between and then there is a windy uh, that's also coming up now, the southeaster, uh, taking over from the northwest winds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, there's always uh, some kind of wind. There are fewer still days. Okay. So, uh, so it's kind of more windy, less still. So it's definitely changing. Perfect. And now we are moving into the windy part. The southeasters uh, in spring are building up. <gasps> Cool, awesome. So pretty much, would you agree then that Cape Town kind of in winter, more often than not, we're probably in the kapha season where it's a sense of wetness, moistness, there's quite a heaviness to, to the weather. Maybe the season this year has been a bit, the winter's been a little bit shorter than normal. Maybe it hasn't had as much of the kapha energy as it normally does. 
But what it's sounding like from now, what Marion is saying is that there's quite a lot of wind coming up. There's a lot of cloud. There's a little bit of sun coming here and there. So mainly we kind of again falling into this space where there's a sense of that there is dryness, there is um, movement. It's very, very changeable. It sounded like she was saying, you know, from one day, you know, it can be sunny, then it can be a little bit as well, then it can be cloudy, then, you know. So things that are very, very changing are, you know, highly vata. And then the summer in Cape Town, I think most of us have spent some time there. We know that it definitely moves towards kind of in that December, January area time, more into the, the pitta, the fiery season, um, the, the, the dosha. Man, in Mozambique, I can tell you that our winters are dry. <laughs> there is not a drop of water. It is cooler than in summer. So there's a coolness. There's definitely a big dryness. If I don't do oil massage, I am like a crackly crocodile. So our winter in Mozambique, where we are, is definitely, definitely the Vata um, Dosha. Our summer, highly, highly, highly pitta. It is fiery hot. You can't go without air con or fan. And it is raining. It rains more often than it doesn't. So it's a great idea of exactly what pitta is. At the moment, it is very, very changeable as well. We kind of have some days where it's windy and then some days where it is really really hot so right now we definitely in that kind of vata phase where very very soon we're going to be hitting full pizza whereas in cape town it's going to be a while before we get there here i promise you it'll probably be a week or two and then we're going to be into full pizza season where we've left vata and then literally until next year um, when we hit towards winter, do we get back into Bata? So, Andy, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself because you are in Pretoria um, and maybe you can enlighten us into what your winter was like or is generally like. I mean, you've only been there for what, three, three four years now? <laughs> mm, yeah, no, we've been here for four winters. Four winters. Yeah, um, this, this one was very cold. Okay. Um, so temperature cold, but dry. Cold and dry. Yeah, no rain. Um, no rain. Yeah, very. Um, not much wind either. It's quite. It's just quite still. Uh, bright blue sky. Um, okay. We did have a couple of cloudy days, but no, you know, we don't get any rain, and it's just been very. Yeah. Uh, just everything gets dry your lips dry. get dry your skin your joints ache um yeah the the, the cold gets in your bones a little mm -hmm. <laughs> just can't right. so but the days are warm and sunny so it definitely sounds like there's a lot of vata there mainly with a little bit of like we'll, we'll say like with cape town as well it may be like the little days of of peter just to kind of bring mm -hmm. the the sunshine out as well um, and your summers, what are your summers like? Uh, hot and wet. Hot and wet. Very... <laughs> All right, so you're pretty much exactly like where we are. Pure yeah. Peter. Hot and wet. All right, and now from kind of the space you've been in to where you're going, what, how does it change? Does it change much or? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the change of seasons are very short. You know, we've gone from very cold. I mean, the days are nice and warm, but it doesn't get that hot and it drops again. Whereas now the temperature's kind of getting higher. So higher temperatures, um, there's a warmer wind. So the air is coming in mm -hmm. and um, you, you can start to feel a little bit of moisture coming in the air. Okay. So again, it sounds like it's like the water... Peter, like if there's a kind of like an mm. even combination of the two moving together mm. towards that. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. So what we can see is pretty much, depending on where we are, our spring is going to be 
quite different, which means that how we adapt and relate to spring depends on where we are, um, which country we're in, which part of the country we're in, where are we traveling to, if we're traveling during that phase, how is that going to impact us? You, it's always lovely to be able to like work with the archetypical seasons, you know, and where we think that like winter is snowy and rainy, and then spring, you know, is this this lovely gentle, you know, the ice melting and there's um, growth happening and summer is hot and autumn is where the leaves are falling. But it's not necessarily exactly like that for, for all of us where we live in. So it's always helpful to have a look at the qualities of the elements, see, okay, what elements are predominant during those phases and then how can we slowly start to, to balance ourselves? So let me just, I think, write this down here to create some space. So for Cape Town, we have kind of like Kappa, which moves to Vata, which moves to Pita. In Mars, we have like Vata, which moves to a big Vata, which moves to a big Pita. And then Pretoria will have, again, Vata, kind of more Vata, Pita, Pita. All right, so let me clear a little bit of the space. And while I do that, um, Maybe you want to throw in the chat if you already know generally what your main constitution is. In yoga, we call that, or Ayurveda, we call that your prakriti. So, for those of you who've been playing around with some of that, you might want to share what you think your prakriti is. Um, we have like I was saying, I've got a lot of Vata in me. So my um, Prakriti is Vata Pita. I've got a lot of Vata and a lot of Pita. And it can be kind of like your physical state, your emotional, your mental. It kind of encompasses a whole lot. But we're going to keep it just very general today and um, look at kind of ourselves. So for me, I definitely know that I'm mainly Vata with a little bit of Pita. Let's make that big. And that's my natural state. Then my Vikriti, so Prakriti is the original, your Prakriti is your original state, nature, Kriti meaning nature, and V is like the unbalanced or the, the not so natural state. And for me, I know that if there's a lot of wind, if it's very cold and dry, then it definitely unsettles me. And at the moment, I would say I have a little bit of a vata imbalance, and I need to focus on balancing seeing that out. So I can see that Andy's uh, mentioned that she's a little bit of a, a vata, <laughs> very vata, very creative. And I think, uh, Marion, you are as well. And when we kind of look at ourselves and we look at like spring ailments, allergies and things like that that come up, we need to take our personal constitution into account. So just like the seasons, we need to see what we are and how to adapt that way. Cool. So like I was saying with me, because I've got a lot of the, the vata, the coolness, the dryness, the roughness, <laughs> the irregularity, the three things that balance vata the most that are the best is rest, regularity, and routine, the three R's in Ayurveda. So what vatas need, or if there is a lot of wind in your system that you need to settle, you need a lot of good rest. And it's not just necessarily getting eight hours sleep, but also getting the rest in your, in your mind so that the mind is not so active because vatas love to think. They have a million creative ideas, especially in the springtime, because everything is coming up. And it's, it's so busy, like Andy was saying, there's so much that's coming up, which is great. But we also need to find a time where we can just close and quieten the mind a little so that what is important can continue to arise and to, to come up. So rest of obviously the body, getting good night's sleep and the mind, very, very important. 
routine and regularity. I can't stress enough how important it is for anyone with a vata imbalance or who's high in vata to get back into rhythm and to have a really, really good routine. And you'll know kind of when you have that routine waxed, you're really able to kind of move through your day more easily. And if something hits you, it's not a big kind of traumatic event. It's you, you can just continue to go on. So that means having, you know, starting your day right, getting your yoga practice in, doing some breath body work, doing your meditation, in whichever way and form it is, having your meals at the same time, three times a day, and not kind of like, ah, oh, kind of like when I'm hungry or when I remember. You want to get your body into a space where it knows that, okay, between eight and nine and clock, clock that is when I'm going to get fed because then the body is not going into, oh, when is she going to feed me? Has she forgotten about me? Da, 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 da. Because when we go into that space, it's very unsettling for the body and it has to expend more energy kind of thinking and worrying about it like, you know, has she forgotten to feed me? Is it coming? Whereas if the body knows regularly that between eight and nine o'clock, I'm getting a decent breakfast, between 12 and one o'clock, I'm getting a decent lunch, between five and six, I'm getting a, an evening meal or a light meal, the body can just relax into a rhythm and it doesn't need to shoot out these kind of like, uh, you know, SOS, save our souls, you know, help, you know, I need, I need nourishment, I need nurturing right now. All right, so that was my little <laughs> lecture on Vata and how to balance Vata and why it really, really is important to work with those three R's. So what I thought we could do now is since we are here in spring and we were sure wanting to chat about imbalances and things that arise in spring, I thought we would troubleshoot any issues that you have or any of your clients have or your students or family members have in spring. And I know like allergies and hay fevers are usually the common ones. So if anyone wants to be in the hot seat and get involved and let me know kind of what we should maybe troubleshoot a little, you can either raise your hand or you can unmute yourself and we can maybe um, troubleshoot together. You don't all need to shout at once. <laughs> Are there any ailments? Are there any any things that you would like to, to bring up? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Well, it's hard because you know when you've got ailments all the time, you're like, is that spring? Um, I think for me, it's coming out of the. It's like the end of winter dryness. I think before because we still haven't had the rains yet up here, mm -hmm. so my skin is still like just dry and, you know. Uh, you know, my feet are cracked and hard, and okay, um, draw you out. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, okay, we'll give you some hair. <laughs> yeah, hair's dry. All right. Hair's dry. There. So, dry. dry is the, the main thing. Is that, do you find that it's everything? Is it just the skin or? Uh, my sinuses get a bit dry as well. Your sinuses. Yeah. Sinuses, skin, throat. Yeah, every yeah, it just um we yeah, we just feel like just lied in water the whole time. <laughs> cool. All right, so to, to turn your sad face into a happy face so that you can now be a happy Andy that is able to get rid of her dryness. <laughs> what are some nice, simple things that we could implement to be less dry? And anyone's welcome to throw in the chat any ideas. I'll start with the skin because this is my absolute favorite. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but anyway, Abhyanga, which is oil massage. So 
It is my favorite thing to do. It is also one of the, apart from rest, regularity, and routine for Vartas, one of the best things for, for Vata body types to do is where you give yourself an oil massage. And it really doesn't have to be complicated. And Ayurveda, it often sounds complicated that it has to be done in this way and that way. And you can't do it then and you have to do it there. And it has to be at least 20 minutes. And I find that it's, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be like that at all. I grab my little squidgy bottle. I don't have it here. I pop that into like a cup of warm water, hot water, and let the water warm up. At this time of year, because it's dry, I'll use just normal olive oil or sesame oil. I do some squidgies, I'll massage my legs. So I'll do long strokes on the long bones, round movements on the joints. And um, again, long strokes on the long bones, round movements. And I'll do my whole body. And I kind of find the areas where, uh, you know, it's a little bit tense and I'll hang out there. And it's a really lovely nurturing practice to do. And when you start doing it regularly, your skin starts to soften. It becomes like a lot more elastic. The oils draw into, into the, the flesh, into the bones, into the muscles, nourishing them. And that's why it's obviously great if you can use a, obviously a high quality oil. You do your face. I dip my fingers into some oil. I pop them into my nose, my ears, so that all the cavities get done as well. For women, especially the bust chest area, the lymph drainage area, really, really important to do that. And I might do that for 10. Sometimes it's just a quick little oil in the mornings. Sometimes I'll have like 10, 15 minutes where I just keep going back to areas that I really, really want to massage. And then when I'm ready, I'll jump into the shower. I'll let the water kind of drain, um, take the excess oil off me. And then I'll pat myself dry with an, I can't actually say an old towel. I don't use an old towel. You may want to use an old towel and not destroy a nice towel because the oil sometimes does go into the towel. Um, and, and then I get dressed and that's the day. And sometimes I'll throw... Like if I'm using olive oil, I might throw some essential oils onto my hand when I'm doing it so that there's just a, a nice smell if I feel I've got the time or I've got the inclination to doing that. So for dry skin, a Bianca is definitely, definitely one of the best and easiest things to, to do to help combat that. Some people prefer to do it in the evenings before going to bed. So they'll, they'll like to massage at night because again, it is really soothing and relaxing. Um, it doesn't work for me because I don't like that feeling um, of kind of oil getting into, into bed, into my sheets and doing my oil massage in the morning just works for me. But it is literally finding what, what works for you. Can, can you do it the other way? Like, so, because sometimes I feel when I, so because I, I a lot of time I do it after a bath or a shower and then do it and 100%. then almost kind of and then because it's so dry normally and warm here and if no one's around I will try and <laughs> stay naked or semi-naked yeah. so it dry it soaks in a bit because um, I find if I wash if I then go shower I feel like I've I've lost the moisture but mm -hmm. I, I suppose if you shower the oil will stay in a little bit I suppose yeah, so I, sp I think for me, like, because I do it every day and, and generally I'll be in the bathroom for like a good 15, 20 minutes because it's my, it's my little me time. But some of us, you know, don't have that. Or it's instead of using like a lotion to use just a very little bit of oil and imagining using that as cream on you instead of um, like I really like I <laughs> soak myself in oil. But if you come in, if you're doing an after a bath or something like that and you just put a, a little bit of on, perfect and then you can run around and it'll absorb into your skin that's perfect you want to make it so that it works for for you and and your lifestyle um, you don't want to make it complicated there's so many kind of different ways and variations of doing it so Andy's got her way I've got my way you need to experiment and play with what is your way cool all right so we've addressed skin sinuses Love sinuses. Um, normally in yoga, and especially if you've got 
more of kind of the copper allergies coming in where there is congestion and there is mucus and there is stuff in there you would use a neti pot with saline solution so this fancy little contraption is my neti pot and i'm lucky because i haven't really had much mucus or congestion this winter because it's been very very dry i haven't really had to use it that often but if you've maybe been in Cape Town and there is still that moistness and wetness and dampness you might want to use a, a neti pot and literally you fill it with water with your saline solution the spout goes in one nose if the water goes up it drains out and it comes out the other side you either do half on one side and then you do half the other side or if you're really congested you do like a whole one one way and a whole one the other way i think people also use like squidgy those little squidgy bottles if they can't find a, a, a neti pot this is kind of like the the kids fail proof one i love it it's so so easy to use um, but what Andy was saying is that her sinuses are dry, and if you have a sense of dryness, then what I use and what I do is nasia. So in my little jar here, I have got coconut, not coconut, I lie, I've got sesame oil, and I'll lie on the couch with my head on that crease so that, so my head is tilted back, and then I'm going to drop the sesame oil nicely into the nostrils. Um, I can't even say how many drops because it's kind of like just a, a squirt in um, nice and gently. And I'll lie there dropping them on both sides for maybe 10 minutes. And then when I come up, it's literally, it's all soaked into it and it's softened and it's moisturized. There's hardly anything that will ever come out. So, um, your neti pot are doing neti when there is mucus and wetness and you need something to dry because the salt will create that dryness. And you rather want to do something like the nasya um, if there is dryness. And the same with actually the ears. I'll do the ears as well. So I'll turn on my side when I'm lying on Craig's lap and I'll pop some drops into my ear and I'll just let that kind of soothe and nourish. So and then I'll, you know, wait a couple of minutes, turn, put the um, towel and pillow on the other side and do, then do the other year after about five, ten minutes. And that, again, especially for us writers who are very, very busy in our head, is so lovely and soothing and nourishing for the ears. I haven't done that, um, I think, ever, actually, to be honest. And I've only started with it this year. And it is, it's lovely. And it's not like something that you have to do every day. Maybe once a week, you want to just treat yourself to like a little, um, kind of a little longer oiling <laughs> of all your, all your body parts. Um, I enjoy doing the, the nausea and the ears in the evenings because I find that helps to calm me down quite nicely. And then I can really sink into a deep sleep. All right. And then our throat. So again, if you've got a dry throat, you want something that is nice and soothing and softening. So normally, if there again is mucus and you want to draw the mucus and the phlegm out, you would maybe do gargling or something with salt water. Whereas maybe if there's a sense of dryness, you want something that's just a little softer. So maybe you want to use some warm water with honey and gargle with honey in, in water instead so that it's more soothing instead of aggravating. So what you can see is that, you know, Andy, she was saying that she is kind of, she's very high vata. At the moment, being in Pretoria, she's definitely in a vata season she's come out of a vata season she's in a vata season and the, and she's going towards a pita season which is also really really um hot and all this dryness is adding you know to all this lovely lovely vata so the important thing is if you're noticing that that is kind of your um kind of set up or where you are that you really really need to work with the aspects of how to balance the cold the dry the rough the irregular and creating and working with those three r's 
Cool. All right, so we had time to troubleshoot one. I can see our time is moving along swiftly. I'm just going to <laughs> quickly pop on power here. I can see that I forgot to put the power on for um, the keeping the laptop charged. Um, if anyone else wants to kind of go through their little persona and where their imbalances are, um, we can definitely do that. Just pop me an email and we can set up like a half an hour session to, to do that. So let's run through a couple of tips. We have pretty much covered a lot of them already, um, but let's go through some of them that you might want to just write down or keep in mind. So for spring and where allergies and hair fevers are high, hopefully this has given you an idea as to, okay, I need to look at, you know, where I'm living, I need to look at myself and now I need to see as to what qualities and what things I need to work to, to balance those. So making sure that, especially in spring, because most of us are in this Vata time that you do the three R's of rest, regularity, and routine. That is by far the most, most important to be doing. We also need to realize that maybe we need to adapt and change our diet a little. So from the, if you've moved from a copper season, especially where it's been that kind of heavy, denseness, dense space, that we need to create a little bit more lightness in our diet. So what I've got here, because I tried it, is it's the perfect time to start growing and adding sprouts into your meals. And sprouting, sprouts are lovely because they've got that like abundance of spring energy and vitality, which is great that you want to use for, for waters. I mean, um, from coming from this kapha season, if you're going into the vata season. And what I love doing is sprouting mung beans and using those in like a, a stew or something like that. So especially for vatas who need a lot of moisture and nourishing to include um, sprouted mung beans in stews or curries is awesome. Great time to clean up our diet a little, just to shift things around and making sure that, you know, they, they are balancing the water. So having stuff that is a little, that is still a little warmer, still a little nourishing and nurturing to us. Uh, what else? If you can avoid allergens, um, or if you really, really struggle with a, a lot of allergies, then the best thing is just to try and stay away so that they don't um, impact you too much. With allergies, it's pretty much your body fighting off something that actually isn't really bad. It thinks it's bad, and that's what causes the, the discomfort with, within you. So when we, season after season, year after year, start living in a more rhythmic way, um, we are able to slowly, slowly, slowly start equalizing and easing out those allergies. And it can take years and years and years, but it does mean that there has to be the effort um, and time and space to, to do that. We need to try and build Agni, so our fire, and that we can do in a number of different ways. It might mean, you know, with a bit of spiced tea like CCF, the um, cumin, coriander, fennel seed tea, equal parts. You throw that in a thermoflask flask and you uh, drink away. Oh, there's so many different ideas. Um, meal spacing to give your, your fire the time to kind of burn up what has been taken in to stay hydrated and to do the practices we were chatting about, like the neti, the nasya, the gargling, and of course your yoga and your yoga nidra to help with relaxation. So what you'll find is that when you start making these little changes and adaptations to the way you do things, it's like compound interest. It adds up. 
season after season, year after year, and you start improving and you improve your health, you become a little bit more vital, you or your vitality increases, you've got more motivation, and there's kind of like that spark that comes back. But it, it does require a little bit of effort and a little bit of time and work to do that. So um, the question is pretty much that you know, need to ask yourself is like, why do you want to make changes? So if you're struggling with spring ailments and things like that, why is it important to you to make adaptations and, and changes to your lifestyle? Because if you don't know why you should do that, you're not going to take the time and the effort to do your oil massage, to do the nausea, to do your gargling. So my big why is as to, you know, why I started including a lot of these practices into my daily life is because I wanted to have more energy. I wanted to, you know, I want to be able to impact positively, you know, more people in, in the yoga world. I want to be able to travel more. I want to have the time and the space to write a book at some stage. And I just want to have radiant health. So you need to figure out what it is that, that you want and, um, and why it is important and slowly make the changes in that direction. And, you know, sometimes making the changes alone is hard and difficult and that's why working in a community and like being on a call like we are today is is really really important because it can be motivating it can be helpful we can troubleshoot ideas and um and it's just really really exciting so if you are interested in working in a group, just because I really have found that being in a dynamic group and working together and having that motivation is extremely helpful. I've now put together a group myself and we're going to be going on a journey back into rhythm using the elements, using Ayurveda, using yoga, using habit change. And we're going to, like we did with our teacher trainings, you know, we're going to be together for a year because you can't create change in just one season. You need all the seasons to go through to make changes. So if you're keen and you're interested in my little journey, shifting from chaos, all of this back into rhythm, then just pop me an email, let me know. Or if you want to troubleshoot your kind of spring challenge or any health challenge, you can pop me an email and we can chat about that as well. I've got like four spots a week that I've made available for free just to chat with anyone who would like to. I've, I'm kind of practicing all these things and, um, and I'm very keen to start liaising with, with all of you and finding out what it is and where you're at and kind of where we can go. So that is pretty much my little journey, my little spring talk for you guys this year. I hope it has been helpful and I hope that you've maybe picked up one or two little practices that you can do. I would love if, you, if you're able to pop in the chat maybe one or two things that you might try to implement, be it changing something in your diet or your lifestyle or something new that you learned um, or if you can't chat you can always unmute yourself and you can just let us know what it is you plan on doing and I can see that it is just after seven so if you have to dash I won't be offended if you need to um, go off the yeah, thank you Nita uh, so there's no so there's no quick fixes uh, sorry, Andy, there's no uh, quick fixes it actually means <laughs> that you've got to do no, the work. And that's it. It's changes. Yeah. No, thanks for the reminder for the, um, yeah, I started at the beginning of the winter, um, the massage and stuff, and I kind of just got sidetracked with it. And it's now the change of season again. I'm like, you know, I'm feeling you can just the feel dryness. Like once you've mm. done it before, mm. um, your body kind of like craves it again. It's like a little, um, like a little 
kind of cycle it kind of goes like that. yeah it's like you kind of like you first go down and you fall and then you like spring up yeah. again and then you kind of forget mm-hmm. about it and then you remember and you're like oh yeah that felt really good and it start kind of you know like every season you know cycle yeah. you start doing it and you just yeah. get better and better at it kind of yeah. with time I- Absolutely. Like with my cyclical charting as well. So I chart like how I am every day. So then I can look back month to month. And and then, you know, and I was reminded this week that this like kind of normally end of August, beginning of September, we always take a trip to warm baths um, in the dead of winter, you know, in the warm water, you know, obviously we haven't been <laughs> these year, last year and stuff, COVID related, but that just soaking after the dryness of like sort of Praetorian winter and just soaking in the warm water would come would come home just refreshed, you know, just feeling so enlivened and stuff. Mm. So and you know that's a reminder. So you know that it, it is. And you know what's also so lovely with oil massage, because I see, can see Marion's also going <laughs> to be doing a bit more oil massage. Is that like yeah. with COVID, you know, everyone's been become so isolated with where they are and who they're seeing you know normally you know you go into a yoga studio and you know you're hugging everyone your teacher and you know the other students and you know you're meeting with friends for lunch and you're hugging and we don't have that physical contact even though it may have been very sporadic we don't we don't have that regularity of that contact anymore and that's why that massage of just you know having the feeling even if it's your own hand on yourself and it's so calming and it's so nurturing and it's it's kind of like that that you're just giving yourself love and i mean we can all do with more love no one <laughs> no one no one i think would say hey i've, I've got enough love um and if, if you are then you just keep spreading it out to everyone yeah cool so and a bit more regularity marion i love that one as well yeah getting getting a bit more of a routine coming in um and the most difficult one for me, and it still is, is an issue, but I've been practicing really, really hard. And the days that I do do it, I notice it is having regular meals at, at regular times. That is a big, big one for us artists to, to regulate that. Okay, cool. So I've got about another two, three minutes. If there's anyone else who's got another question or would like to say something, um, you're welcome. Uh, Nina, can yes. you hear me? Hi, is that oh, I'm Chitra. Hi, yeah. I'm sorry, I joined a bit late. I just forgot about it completely. Um, would I be able to access the recording? 100%. I'll pop the recording on um, our YouTube channel tomorrow, and then I'll just email you the link. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, can... thanks. But I mean, the little bit that I heard from about, yeah, and I think the last 10 minutes, um, you know, just uh, reconfirms for me that uh, I need to continue with the practices that I, that I have started, you know, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I need to uh, be regular, more regular with my massages and uh, yeah, and and now I need to eat more regularly. Be- I mean, properly, you know, because the winter has been quite severe here in Cape Town, and so I probably picked up a couple of kilos. And now I need to shed all of that, you know, after all the sweets and the coffees and sweet drinks, and you know, that just seemed like the best way to to keep warm. I mean, there's a lot of food, home cooked food all the time. Well, not all the time, but most of the time. Um, But uh, it's time to shed all that um, insulation. Yep, and that's exactly it. Yeah, it's kind of like like we're saying. You know, it's coming out of that cup of time, and with that cup of energy, you know, it's so it's so heavy, it's so dense. You now need like the pitta, the fire to kind of put a little spark in it and get things moving. So it's, you know, to get the, the body mm. moving, the digestion moving, yeah. whatever the story is, um, you know, like I was saying about my sprouts, this is the perfect time to start, you know, getting whatever you're able to sprout 
um, to sprout at home yeah. and um, throwing those into smoothies or salads. Um, and if, if you still feel that you need um, a little bit of warmth and moisture, then you just do the mung bean sprouts in a nice, um, uh, with a nice dal or something like that. Yeah, so, no, I do that regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So brilliant. Lovely. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Chitra. Lovely. I'm glad that you joined, even if it was a little light later. Yeah, I'm sure so sorry. The, no problem. You get the recording. So cool, guys. Thank you so much for joining. And um, if there is anything else, then you are welcome to email me and I'll forward you this recording as well tomorrow. So if you find that there's anyone else you think may benefit from watching it and just be reminded of some of these tips, you're welcome to send it on to them. So thanks. Would you just also, um, will you be sort of uh, doing another one of this, just telling us more about the, uh, the course that you're going to do, the, the groups? Cool. Yes. Yeah. So next month, I'll do another recording next month. I haven't quite decided what it's going to be called, but it's pretty much, I'm using, going to use your word, and you need to ask if you're am I allowed to use it, but like unearthing your desires. So um, just starting to figure out kind of like, you know, what are my deeper desires? Where am I wanting to, to go? Um, so we're using kind of the energy from spring to wake up and to kind of set us in a direction for summer. So we'll be calling it kind of like unearthing our, our desires. And then and there, I'll just chat a little bit about, um, you know, the, the course that is going to be coming up in, Excellent. in, the, in the new year. Thank you. Cool, man. Thanks, Thanks Andy. So. Thanks for your input. It's always lovely to have you. Um, can I just uh, uh, sorry can I ask a question yes uh, Nina uh, did you perhaps say something like you know starting some kind of group where we kind of support each other or, or something like that or is that not a part of your agenda so yes so I'll be I'll be taking people kind of through a a, a year-long journey and mm. we're going to be using then the principles of yoga, of Ayurveda, and have it change on this, this year-long journey, where we'll move from kind of where we are now to where we want to be going, you know, better health, better vitality, mm. more energy, okay. all of those things. What we, where you'll be able to find a lot of the information is on the Yoga Awakening Africa Facebook page. And I'll send the links with the recording as well. And what we'll do for those who kind of need to be fired up a little into to moving into spring is we'll do like a healthy, it's just a seven day healthy eating challenge from Monday. And it's not mm. going to be like, you can't drink coffee, you can't drink this, you have to eat that. It's not going to be like that at all. We're going to choose what it is we want to work on. And then I'll do like a little recording every day. I'll post it and we can just motivate each other to, to kind of get into maybe clean eating. And we're just going to do that for a week and we're going to see how it goes. So when, does that, when does that start? We'll do that on Monday. We'll start on Monday. On Monday. Okay. Okay. Because I must say, you know, I get very anxious when it, I'm, you know, I'm, quite vata orientated and I get very anxious when I have to follow some kind of um, restrictive <laughs> yeah restrictive uh, kind of diet and all of that you know but at the same time I also need to curb my um, sort of undisciplined way of eating also especially when the weather's cold and I'm sitting for hours and hours with work that you know I need mark I need to get through like hundreds of papers and you know that's like one way of getting through through it yeah. so while you know I find it restrictive I also need some kind of discipline and mm. you know this this might be some kind of not solution, just, but you know, a possibility. Start you in the right direction. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, 
probably no accident that I decided to join you today. No, because I know all of it. I know, I mean, I've studied all of this. You know, I'm a yoga instructor and all of that. But um, I, I, I get lost along the, the way as well, you know. Well, well this is exactly so, it. And that's exactly where I found myself, Chitra. I can relate the same to you. It's like, you know, you learn all the, the yoga and you learn all about it. But if you're not like in that community to stay motivated mm. and to help one another and to be in that, that group setting, it's really, really hard to, to stay on track. It's very tough. It's really, really, really tough. tough. Yeah. 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 So. Mm. Okay. Um, so, uh, so how will this be done? I mean, are you sending some kind of guide or uh, feedback session or how does this work? Um, after after this class or this this workshop. No, I'm just talking about the seven day challenge that you were mentioning. Okay. Yeah, we'll just it'll be like a little recording that I'll post on that Facebook group, the Yoga Awakening okay. Facebook group, and it'll okay. just be an idea as to um, you know let's focus on what I can already tell you will be on Monday. Um, let's focus on hydration. So we're just going to yeah. focus on sipping warm water every yeah. 20 minutes for the day. And yeah. that's going to be the, the only tip. And um, every day there'll be like a little thing like that. So we're not going to say, you know, you can't eat chocolate, you can't eat mm. this, you can't drink coffee. Mm. We're just going to say, okay, what happens to our body when we start hydrating? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, now I understand the process. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, I look forward to seeing Thank you there. You. And um, we'll catch up with you soon. Hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Chitra. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Bye-bye.